So I think we'll get started. You guys are here. You, you, you know, you're, you're taking time out of your busy day, and we'll work through any confusion as other people join us. And uh, by way of introduction, I'm Greg Nanigian. I have one of my associates with me. This is Jeff Morgenthaler. Uh, and Jeff's been, uh, we've been working together now for what, going on five years? Five years. Five yeah. years. Five years this month, I think, actually. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. And uh, over on the producer station is uh, Will Longley. Uh, hey, Will, why don't you come on up here over and just say a quick hello. I want to introduce Will. Will's been with our team now for a little over a year. Hey, good morning. And Will does everything around here. He sells, he runs the producer station, he does social networking. I mean, you name it, Will's doing it. He's doing a little bit of training. And then uh, there were four other people on our team that aren't present in this room, but they're they're uh, happily still working. Okay. And Greg, I, Greg, this is Mike Devalock. I just want to thank you again for uh, hosting this for the Merrimack Valley Chamber. This is the second one you've hosted for us. And the very first one was very, very informative. We had people say, you know, bring them back. We want, we want to hear some more. So thank you and your team again for taking the time I to schedule a talk with our members today. We appreciate it. And to uh, all the all the members, I want to thank you all for joining us today. We appreciate it. If there's anything we can do for you and your business, don't hesitate to reach out. We have a number of great webinars and in-person events coming up through the month of August and into September. And you can find those all out at MerrimackValleyChamber.com, including a nice, uh, great webinar with Google coming up next Friday. But like I said, if we can help, if we have any, have any assistance, don't hesitate to Thank you, and I also want to say, I just also want to say thank you to uh, Newburyport Bank, who's the uh, sponsor today. We appreciate their support of uh, businesses in the Merrimack Valley and uh, and all the great services they do. So thank you to Newburyport Bank for for their sponsor today. Yeah, I got to say, Mike, uh, I, I'm very impressed with what the Merrimack Valley Chamber does. One of the most active and involved chambers, uh, very much reaching out. I love your email campaigns. And uh, I, I, I'm enjoying working with you, and I want to thank you for the opportunity once again to get in front of some of your members, and as well as other people that might be guesting today. So, my my yeah. objective here is that people oh, leave. Me. Yeah. So my objective is that people leave with something today that's going to help them have more fun and make more money. And uh, I'm gonna I'm gonna basically leave it up to you guys that are participating to help me with what I'm going to work on. And I'm going to do that similarly to the last one I facilitated where the feedback was fantastic. I'm going to do it the same way. And I'm just going to give you a sentence to complete where you're setting the agenda. And then Jeff and I will work off of your agenda. And the sentence, I'm going to, I'll put it up here on the uh, whiteboard. And here it is. It's, I could sell more if only I could. Right? I could sell more. If only I could, depending upon what you bring up, we'll train on it. I could sell more if only I, if only I could, you know, and then you're just filling in the blank and the blank could be, you could say, well, let me give you ground rules, right? Obviously you want to put something in there that is within your control. So if it has to do with the economy or the pandemic, we can't help with that. But if you put in there, I could sell more if only I could accelerate the sell cycle. Or if you said, if only I could be more resilient and effective working from home, if you're working from home, right? Or if only I could take a uh, negative prospect and swing them positive. Or if only I could get people to call me back more often. Or if only I could get through to more people. If only I didn't have such a high need for approval then to be liked, because I realized it's getting in the way of me moving it towards a decision point with the prospect because I fear rejection. You get started. Hope you guys can relate to some of these. Uh, if only I could get rid of think it overs, get back to me, and we'll let you know. If only I could get more referrals and introductions. You getting the idea? So you pick, but just as long as in your heart of hearts you think, you know what, this probably is something that can be worked on, uh, right? So as long as you think it's solvable, and we're sales and sales management trainers. Uh, so it's, as long as it's within our kind of area of expertise, we'll work on it. Otherwise, we'll let you know if it's not. So I don't, I don't want to mislead anybody here. So, I mean, you pick. So if you could, think about that. And then when you're ready, uh, either share it with me verbally or you can put it in the chat box. If you 
cursor down to the lower part of your screen is a chat box you can click and then you can type it in and it'll appear we'll be able to see it here if you want to just share it out loud verbally i'm going to make some notes i'm going to put them right up here on the whiteboard and then jeff and i will start working on them and again hopefully you're going to leave with some solutions to some of the problems that are frustrating you or getting in the way of your success and, it, and you, you know when you think about it they all they're all kind of going to boil down to either more appointments or improving the closing ratio when you boil sales down all you know it really boils down to those two things but we'll work specifically off anything that has to do with that either at the end of the day you're getting more appointments and appointments could be by zoom phone or face to face nowadays right or we're improving closing ratios so you pick whatever you want to work on absolutely your choice And I see Amy, she's working hard there, coming up with something, I think. <laughs> I'm guessing. Okay. <laughs> hey, good morning, Jeff. How are you doing? Oh, where'd he go? I don't know. Where'd he go? Oh, here we go. So we've got one. Okay, Rayanne, you have uh, not fear the no. Okay, very good. Uh, can you elaborate on that just a little bit, Rayanne? It just can be defeating when you hear no um, consistently. And I know there's, what is it, a hundred no's gets you a yes or something, but it just not feeling the negativity. Okay. Yeah. I think that's actually a pretty, uh, you're in good company with that one. And separating feelings from what you're doing in a selling role is, is huge. It has a lot of importance. So, all right, great, great. And then Suzanne, you have, be more comfortable holding firm on pricing for add-ons. And uh, Suzanne, could you just uh, elaborate a little bit on that? And also, what do you sell? Sure, hi. Um, I'll turn myself on too. <laughs> Good morning. Um, we are Moderna Appliance and Furniture. So we have uh, appliance service and we also have a retail store for uh, new appliances and furniture products. And we realized that we have you know, trying to be nice, trying to be affordable, trying to, um, you know, all sorts of things as we've gotten started over the first few years. Uh, there are add-ons as, for example, um, you know, the big boxes, oh, free delivery, free this, free that, free everything. And our pricing is already at a lower price point. So then if we try to do free delivery, we have people that we need to pay who deliver. So it, the, the add-ons are what I mean. Um, we're starting to learn, but it's still, it's an awkward I, I'm just not, um, it's not, it's not my most, uh, it's not my comfort zone to say, oh, sure. Yes. You know, we need you to, to, uh, it just, it, I'm just, I'm not, I don't have a long background in sales. I've been doing this. We've been okay. doing this, uh, since 2012, but it's not my, my family history. It's not, you know, it's not my comfort zone. I'd much rather just do the social media. I'd rather, you know, the yeah. computer stuff, the bookkeeping, uh, any, any tips would be, great. Tips would be great. Now, are you selling to, uh, you uh, mute everybody out there, Will, except for uh, Suzanne. We're going to get rid of some of that background noise, and then we got to unmute Suzanne so she can we can hear. Yeah, so, she's got, I can't oh yeah, okay, you got it, mute Suzanne. Good job. Uh, so, are you selling to uh, homeowners as well as contractors, or just can you help me with who you're selling to? Yep, uh, predominantly homeowners. Um, we do have a couple of property management companies, so that's less of an issue. You know, we have we have um, a relationship with them. It's the same product that they're getting on a regular basis. And they're, you know, okay. we set, we set a delivery price. We set a schedule for them. It's the homeowner that says, Oh, well, Home Depot has a sale and they, you know, they're taking 40% off and it's free delivery. And that's, that's when we have to try to do our, our, well, it's us answering the phone. We're the ones that are going to yeah. sell it to you, service it. We're going to respond where we have it in stock right now we have marked up our website so that everything that's in stock which for appliances is a big and furniture um, and mattresses actually are starting to be an issue too with the current covid situation of what do you actually have available so um it's it's the consumer it's the home, home all right home. all right i'll come back to it uh, okay. i'm gonna look at some of the other ones thank you very much for sharing all of that that really gives me a good idea of what i need to work on sure. uh and then uh i think it's dahlia I hope I'm pronouncing that correctly, had a better understanding of how to start that initial contact. Okay, great. And uh, Dali, are you prospecting? 
Or yeah. Maybe? Um, so this is a, this is a hard question for me because this is my first time in a sales role and I started on March 17th <laughs> and I'm selling events. And you're selling so events. I started selling at a new property in a pandemic. So I don't really know right now. Our biggest challenge is we can't sell because we don't have space to sell. Um, mm -hmm. the college has taken back a lot of their spaces to use for classrooms. Yeah. Uh, so I really, I have one space that I can sell. I only have it till October and I have a lot of restrictions on how I can sell it because of the government. So a lot of that's out of our control. Um, but I also don't really know pre pandemic what selling that space was like, if that makes sense. Sure. So I'm yeah. not really sure. Like if we were having a lot of people like go into the process and then back out at some point, or I know awareness has been something that my boss is having me focus on and like bring more awareness to the fact that we're here and what we do, even if we can't do all of it right now. <laughs> okay. um, so I've been doing a lot of like cold emailing because I'd love to do the, you know, door to door, go into your office, bring you some cookies. Like that's more yeah, as a hospitality yeah. professional, the face to face interaction is what I excel at and trying to do it with, um, through emails and just like sending it out to the ether and who knows if they even open it is, is really difficult for me. <laughs> I gotcha. Well, I'm looking, I'm listening to what you shared with me and I'm looking at what's in the chat box and I'm thinking, and we don't have a whole lot of time. We've got about 35 minutes left. And I think what we're going to, I think what I'll do is uh, I'm going to pick something that I'm pretty sure it's going to help everybody, no matter what the agenda items are that you're bringing up here. And I see Amy set aside time and so forth, uh, explaining the benefits is surely of safe, organic personal care products instead of the, the allowed toxic ones. Gotcha. I'm going to train you guys on a, um, well, let me ask you this question. How many of you are familiar with a communication model called DISC? Anybody familiar with DISC? Good. Oh, oh okay. Rayanne is, Amy is. All right, well, I want to talk to you a little bit about how to use it in your interactions with clients, prospects, customers, other people that you might work with within the organization, because studies have shown that when you use this communication model, your, your effectiveness in the selling role increases 25%. And Dahlia, it'll be a nice way for you to sort of uh, learn something that's going to be helpful to you but absolutely very low risk to use. In other words, it's hard to kind of get it wrong. And even when you get it wrong, it's, well, it's just hard to get it wrong. It's, it, and it's low risk. So, and then the hope is that you guys will like it a lot and we'll be reaching out to you, you know, probably next week to see how you like the workshop and to see if it might make sense for us to talk about more training. But I think DISC is a nice model for you to learn, learn early on. And if we do more training, we can build on the uh, communication model of DISC and the other stuff that we train on will be uh, more effective. So uh, we'll work on that for 35 minutes. There's certainly a lot of material in it uh, that we can fill up 35 minutes, no problem. In fact, we run full day programs on this. But I can, we can knock out in 35 minutes a pretty good amount of uh, material that you can use. So let me just kind of explain it to you a little bit here. And Jeff, anytime you want to chime in and add to it, go ahead. Um, so it's, it's an acronym. It was developed by uh, William Moulton Marston in uh, the 30s. This fellow graduated Harvard University with a degree in clinical psychology in 1928. He wrote the original Wonder Woman series, and he also invented the polygraph. And then he went on to develop this communication model or behavioral model known as DISC. It's, so it's public domain. Anybody can use it, uh, write about it, whatever. The acronym stands for uh, dominance or dominant influencer, steady relator, <clears throat> and <clears throat> cautious compliant. And these are different traits of people that might be used in varying degrees when they communicate. And so one of the ways that Jeff and I have found to train on it and very quickly have people understand it, make sense, is we just take the whole thing to the animal kingdom. In fact, we make a lot of analogies between these particular traits and different birds, right? 
So I'm going to give you the, uh, the different birds that these relate to. So the dominant trait would relate to traits of an eagle. The influencer would relate to parrot. Then you have steady relator, which would be dove. And finally, cautious compliant, which would be owl. And I'm going to let Jeff describe what the traits and characteristics are, but let me just say this. We all have all four traits. It's a matter of how frequently we use traits of the different birds. And so some of us are going to use others, you know, maybe eagle traits more than dove traits and vice versa. So by relating it to the birds, it'll quickly help you guys to understand what this is all about. So you want to kind of chime in here and run with it. Run with it? Okay. All right, here you go. Here's the scriber. All right. I'm um, take my coffee out of your way. So as we go through this, um, I, want, I want you to begin thinking about what bird you are. Okay? So you're, as Greg said, you're going to be dominant in one of these birds and maybe a second one, but the other two you're not going to be. But the key is you figure out what bird you are and then you're going to want to mirror and match their bird. Are you with me? It's your job to not impose your bird on them. That's what most salespeople do. And I'll go through the birds. But they impose their own bird on that person because that's who they are, and they think that's what is going to work. Meanwhile, that bird's thinking, we're not really flying together here, you know? We're not really bonding because they are a different bird. So the we chose the eagle for, for our dominant business person. So think about business people that are very strong. They want to get to the point. They, they, they're willing to argue and fight with you because they love that sport. They're a dominant communicator, business person. And so we chose the eagle. So just right now, write down just one characteristic of an eagle as we go through this, as you think about the bird and why we chose the eagle for a dominant communicator, all right? And then our second one is an influencer. So we chose the parrot. This communicator loves to tell a story, to hear a story, to get through that meeting as fast as possible and go to the new Tuscan restaurant that just opened up in Newburyport. That's what the parrot wants to do. They want to socialize colorful, all right? Now, the third bird is your steady relator. We chose the dove. They want to build trust. They want to build trust with you. It, it, they want to be patient, right? And so there's some things that we train on around your voice and the words you use and the pace to now match up. So when you're speaking with a dove, they're not the eagle, so they don't want to be quick to the point. They're not going to want to fight and argue. They're one, they want you to be very patient with them and work with them. And they all buy. And they, uh, every bird is a good bird, okay? Every bird is a great bird. And then the cautious compliant, we chose the owl. Because these are, this is a very deliberate communicator. They love facts and figures. They're very analytical. They're not going to trust you at first either, but, but they will build it. But they're the analytical bird. Now, just having said that, what bird do you think Greg is? Now, why I ask this? Because when you think about it, I'm all about real-world usage, right? And you're going into a virtual meeting. How much time do you have to figure out that person's bird? Right? What do you think? How much time do you have to figure out Shirley's bird when I first have a meeting with her? You, Rianne, you got it. You got it. It's got to be. It's got to be under a minute. When you say crank, yeah, it's got to be under a minute. Pretty quick. So that's why I want you all right now, because there's no right or wrong, as Greg said. But the wrong is is not doing this. The wrong is imposing your communication style. So now. I want you thinking about your style. So everyone write down what you think your bird is, who you are, and what bird you think dominant bird Greg is, what, what bird do you think I am? 
So we'll give you a second, and we'll go around, and we'll do two things. Share us what you think your bird is, and then what Greg is or mine, okay? Who would like to go first? How about Maria? Oh, is that, am I saying it right? Yeah, Maria. Yes, hi, how are you? Hi, um, I, I don't know you or Greg well. Thank you for having me today. Um, I like the owl. Okay, so you think that your communi main communication style is more of the owl. Yep. And excellent. Suzanne. Excuse me? Suzanne, what bird do you think oh, you are? Um, I, I put, I, I might be a combination of the dove or the owl, a little bit more of the cautious side. Um. Yeah, I would, I, that's what I had for you. I totally agree. <laughs> okay, so outstanding. Shirley. Can Shirley, can you unmute? Yeah. There you go. So I think I'm a mixture between the dove and the parrot. Spot on. I'm going to agree with that, and we're not making a <laughs> thing. And because you got you got a lot of smile and energy that comes out, which is going to be more on your parrot side. Yep. Uh, I can see the nurturing side of the dove and just our initial interactions. Delia. Uh, I think I'm a hard parrot with a little owl, maybe. <laughs> well, when you move your head there and your uh, your glasses turn purple, I'm thinking parrots. <laughs> I know if you just saw the screen, but yeah, I'm thinking parrot. All right, Amy. Parrot and dove. Parrot and dove, okay. I'm a hybrid. How about, how about uh, Leanne? Can I say it correctly? Yep, you are. Um, I don't know. I think I'm more of a dove and an owl, but I've had a lot of people tell me I come across a little bit. I guess more like a parrot, so. Okay, and, and now you've had Greg up here, but this is a real situation. If you're selling to Greg and it's your first meeting, right, you want to you wanna do what I call a gut check on, on your bird, right, and, and set that bird aside, right, and then mirror and match Greg. So, Greg, what is your dominant bird? Yeah, run with it on so, the internet. Yeah. yeah. So so there's a, what's called your natural behavioral style of the natural bird, and then there's an adaptive behavioral style. So many of us will flex and modify our natural behavioral style to a given situation. So if you've got a four-year-old, the way you're talking to your four-year-old you know, will probably be different than the way you talk to, um, let's say, uh, an adult. You would assume so anyway, okay? And the way that you might talk when you're on the golf course uh, to a friend might be different than when you're talking to a prospect or when you're totally relaxed at home with your, your husband or your wife. So we'll have a tendency to flex and modify our natural communication style to that of a given situation. And because of the, the ability to flex and modify, we can take this DISC model, train people on it, and for best results, you flex and modify to that of the prospect. So for example, let's say that you have a, a prospect in front of you that has a lot of eagle traits, you know, eagles, territorial, 60 square miles, all their own, they're predators. There's actually been studies that show that they will dive into a, a lake as deep as 10 feet to latch onto the prey and they'll stay latched onto the prey even to the death, right? So in the negotiation, a, a person who has a lot of eagle traits who's low in their parrot, dove, and owl traits wants a win-lose. They want to win. They want to kill the salesperson. They, I, I, you know, until they become self-aware and realize if you're always having win-loses, you can't have long-term relationships, many of them will behave that way. So when you're negotiating with an eagle, what you have to do is you have to give them the perception that they won, but while in reality... You won too, okay? And they like they like it when you stand up to them. But there again, you got to realize, you know, you, you, you can't stand up to them so much that you're coming after their high ego strength because they'll start to get not okay and get rid of you. You're selling to a, power, a, a parrot, it's different. 
They're effusive, outgoing, people-oriented. They want to win-win in the negotiation, whereas the eagle wants to win-lose. They want to combine social with business, whereas the eagle wants to keep it all business, social, and humor. They can, a lot of them just consider that a waste of time. And then finally, when you're selling to the dove, they're interested in whether or not they can trust you. They want to win-win. Doves are very people-oriented, as parrots are people-oriented. Eagles are very results and let's say production oriented. So with a dove, you want to give them time to let to get you know let them to get to know you so that they can feel like they can trust you. And only once they trust you will they purchase from you. And finally, owls out of the four birds, they require the most information. And uh, they want facts, facts, and more facts. Well, and lots of times with an owl, it's going to boil down to one thing, and the one thing is going to be the price, right? And and again, I didn't share this with you. But the owls want also want a win lose in the negotiation. Again, I'm assuming they're they're kind of low on the other three birds. Doves want a win win. So your two people oriented birds are going to be parrots and doves. Your pool, your two sort of production oriented birds are going to be owls and eagles. So for example, if a dove went to IKEA and bought a piece of furniture. Can anybody guess what they do when they get home to put it together? What would they do? What would their process be? Anyone want to take a shot at it? What would they actually do with that piece of furniture? I know we've got some people that are just calling in here, so I'm going to uh, try to get you guys involved too so you can get more out of it. Um, Justin, maybe you could share with us if you have any thoughts on that. When the eagle gets that piece of furniture home from Ikea or Shirley, what do you think they do to get it put together? Anybody have any ideas on that process? What would their process be? All right, Dali, you want to take a shot at it? I mean, I feel like they're probably not going to quietly read the directions first. It might be more of a pull everything out of the box and just try to start putting it together. <laughs> you're exactly right. <laughs> Shirley, I'm glad you're on the, on the call. You say, read the instructions one step at a time. You're absolutely wrong, Shirley. That's, ter that's a terrible response. <laughs> they gotta take those directions and just toss them aside, right? Then they're gonna whip it together, and if they have a few leftover parts, they're not gonna sweat it. No big deal. You getting this? Now, what about a parrot, Shirley? What do you think a parrot's gonna do? Now, remember, they're effusive, outgoing, they're people-oriented, they're the life of the party, they're colorful. Right? They trust people almost to a fault sometimes, to a fault sometimes, right? They want to have a good time. They love combining social with, with anything that they do. They want to enjoy the experience of being sold. So now they get this piece of furniture home, they got to assemble it. What are they going to do? How are they going to get it put together? Let's see. I'm looking at open a bottle of wine. Very good and make a mess of my living room. Excellent, Dahlia. <laughs> the other thing they're gonna do is they're gonna call all their friends, they're gonna bring them all over, and they're gonna have a big, a, you know, get the furniture put together party. And who cares if the furniture actually gets put together? They're gonna have an awesome time. That's what it's all about, <laughs> right, with the parrot. So when you're selling to a parrot, make it fun. Uh, you know, before the pandemic, you could go and have lunch with them and do business. Now, you know, I guess you could do the same thing, you know, you could but they like to do that. Whereas an eagle never wants to go out of the office to combine, you know, well, hardly ever anyway, right? What about the dove? The dove gets that piece of furniture home. They're getting ready to put it together. What are they going to do? Oh, Dolly, you've done that? You've had like a painting party or whatever? You say, I've done this in the chat box. Oh yeah, we went to Ikea and then we came home and it was like a whole thing. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's an experience. <laughs> What about the dove? What's the dove going to do to get that piece of furniture put together? What do you think? No ideas? Suzanne, you want to take a crack at it? You've got some dove traits, right? Visualize yourself. You have the furniture home now. You're taking it out of the box. What's your next step after you get it? Well, maybe there's a step before taking it out of the box. I'm not sure. What would you do? Yeah, I don't know. See, I said I was Dove Owl, but I go and read the instructions because we have to assemble furniture for the store and there's no there's no going back. You know, I, I've had people say, oh, no, no, it'll be fine like that. I'm like, no, you're missing parts. <laughs> I'll count them all out. So I might not be a Dove if that's uh, wow, <laughs> if there's a... 
owls will get the instructions and their first step is to inventory all the parts against the parts list in the instructions. Okay. Make sure everything <laughs> is there. You nailed it, right? <laughs> now, that, Suzanne, what will you do if something is missing from the parts? What will you do? Oh, I've counted it again. I've insisted it's there. We actually, there's a, a kind of a headboard that we used to get and they had slipped out. I knew they were there somewhere. They slipped out. They weren't, they're supposed to be attached by a tape and they were buried way farther in the headboard. So I'm persistent. I was ready to call the company. I said, look one more time. And <laughs> there you go. That's a lot of, and that's owl stuff that you're doing right there. Very detail oriented, analytical, follow through, nothing slips through the cracks. Right, uh, and an owl might read the directions several times, make sure the parts are all there, and only then start, then start the assembly process. And it might even go on YouTube and see if there's a YouTube video. Watch mm -hmm. that first. An eagle would never do this kind of thing. <laughs> However, what does start to happen as an eagle once again tries to put something together, eagles are very time conscious, so they may come to a point where they're saying, "All right, I hate reading directions, but I'm going to read them because if I read them." I can get, I can whip the thing together a lot quicker than if I don't read them. And that's the only reason they got to read directions. They probably still won't inventory the parts, but they'll at least read the directions once they start to realize what happens when you don't read the directions. You got, you got it? Doves, very similar to owls in that regard, but they generally, they may not take the time to actually inventory all the parts, but they'll put it together as a process. They may talk to other people. You, know, you might have doves call you up, Suzanne, for some help. So what's my process in putting this together? I saw the directions, but can you walk me through it one time? That could be a dove doing that. Remember, doves are very people oriented. So having a phone call with someone such as yourself is comfortable for them. Owls are a little more reserved, a little more introverted, not so much people oriented. They'd rather study the directions and go online and not reach out to anybody necessarily to learn how to put it together. Make some sense? Yeah. So when you, let's say, for example, you have a lot of parrot trades and you're selling to an owl, if you're effusive, outgoing, using a lot of humor and, and walking off the topic left and right, how's the owl going to feel about that? They're like, wait a second, I, I, I can't follow you all over the place. Can we, you know, can we just sort of like stick to the subject, right? And the parrots, they're just having fun. I have a very good client uh, who's up in the North Shore. And uh, he, at, he was the executive vice president of the company. The company has 11 million square feet of property under management, has 25 property managers reporting to him. He now got promoted to president of this organization. And I had trained him and his property managers on the discommunication and behavioral model and I have an office here in Braintree, and I have an office up in Woburn. I called him up on a Monday, and, and I, I said to him, look, I said, uh, I need to go over a few things with you. Is there any chance you could meet me at Strega on Friday? We'll, we'll grab lunch, and I'll go over some things with you. But I couldn't put it to him that simply, because this particular individual is, has a lot of owl, and owls don't like to combine social with business. So... Because he had training on disc, what I said to him was, is there any way you can get your owl out of the office to meet me for lunch on Friday at, at Strega? And he laughed because he knew he was familiar with the model. And he said, okay. So we met for lunch that Friday at Strega. And he said to me, now you got to remember, this is a guy in charge of a team of people, 25 property managers and others under them, 11 million square feet, right? Think about that. Here's what he said to me at lunch. He said, Greg, I got to tell you something. I said, what's that? He goes, and this is the first business lunch I've had in three years. In fact, it's the first business breakfast, lunch, or dinner I've had in three years. Think about that. That's how infrequently an owl wants to combine social, even lunch, with business. But he was glad he was there. We had a great meeting and it was fruitful for both of us. So that's what you're dealing with when you're selling to the different birds. And knowing how to flex and modify your style is very, very key to getting best results. So 
Do you want to pick it up from here and talk a little bit about the uh, water bubbler example sure. or some of the other examples? What are you thinking? Yeah, well, yeah, I'll take them through that. Okay, cool. Have time to yeah, read. we've got 15 minutes. Oh, yeah, but we'd actually, we actually put um, our, our participants through this exercise. But based on our time thing, we'll just we'll just go over with you and get 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 your thoughts on it. But um, I want you to think about first of all the office environment. Let's go back to the old days, if that's okay. So everyone's in their cubes, but now it's lunchtime. So they're going to go walk to the water cooler, stop, have a chat as employees, and then they're going to go on to the corporate cafeteria, right? So we'll start with eagles. So you've got three eagles, and they go to lunch together, three eagles. They stop at the water cooler. What do they talk about? What, do we, what would the eagles be talking about? All right? Jot down a couple things, and then, you know, give us your thoughts. And, and you know, how we train, we call it a safe zone. So whatever you have in your head and you're thinking, bring it up. We want to hear it. We want no hold back. So what do you think the three eagles are talking about? Amy, what are you thinking? Amy, Amy, you want to take a shot at it? She's on pros. Well, we're frozen. Oh, he's just taking pictures. Oh, okay. I'm sorry. I was trying to unmute. <laughs> Amy, what do you um, think people would be talking about? My first response is that they'll talk about projects that are going on and the other team members that are involved. Okay. Who else would want to take a shot at that? They're probably good. They're probably going to be wanting to talk about what they got done, what results they got, how they won, right? So they may be talking about over the weekend, right? That they won the croquet tournament with the family, right? They got this done in business and they came out number one and they'll talk about who came out number two. Very competitive. You see where we're going with this? Very competitive. All right. Now, you have three parrots going to the corporate cafeteria. They stop at the water cooler to do a quick chat. What are three or four parrots talking about? Shirley, you want to take a shot at that? Three parrots. Three or four parrots. I think their socialization, I mean, just family things, not really business things. They'll be talking about, you're right, they'll be talking about what they, what they did that weekend, right? What restaurant they went to, what party they want to have coming up <laughs> in the company. And, and no one can get in a word edgewise between the three of them, right? Yeah. <laughs> and their body language, it's all over the place. And they're outgoing. So that's what they're talking about. Now, you have three owls stopping at the water cooler. What are they talking about? Delia, what are you thinking? Three owls. The water temperature of the water cooler. <laughs> <laughs> hey, Suzanne, did you know the water is a little bit cooler this month? I think we should have engineering check that out on the thermostat -o meter. Well, if the owner of the company, he might want to jack up the temperature to conserve water because people drink less if they get brain freeze. Mm. Okay. <laughs> Can I give you a real story on this? Can I give you a real live one? It just hit me. Okay. So right before the offices um, had closed, and now my client's offices are opening for us to come in even on on-site in, uh, in, in August. That's cool. But he said, I'm competing against four other training firms, right? And he's the CEO of this firm in Bill Ricca. Big operation. And he wants me to do a site visit. And so I go in there. Now, how, 
how much first time ever meeting an author, how much time do I have to figure out his bird? Like like right there. And so and I'm a parrot. Yeah, surely you got it. I'm a parrot, so I'm going, Jeff, keep the parrot in the cage, right? Keep it in the cage. I'm going to be dealing with, with I don't know. But as we were we started our walk right away, the first thing he did was he stopped and he checked the thermostat in the office. I said, hmm, okay. And then when we went out to the factory area, he checked out that thermostat. So I'm thinking maybe an owl, right? But he stopped and he barked out to two of the people. He said, go back to Marianne, the office manager, and get that back to 70 and go get Fred in the, and get that back to 60. And he goes, oh, Jeff, now let's go look at our, our equipment. I go, I got an eagle. I got an eagle. So then when we went into his office, right, he went like this to me. He goes, tell me why you're different. And you got 30 minutes. And I go, I don't want to do that. I need more than 30 minutes. Or we're not going to have a productive meeting. And he goes, all right, how much time do you need? I go, well, we agreed on an hour. Let's just stick to that. And I could just see him low. Now, I... I went into evil mode, right? To mirror and match, as Greg said, to flex his eagle. But guess what happened? Up in the, his mind, he's going, all right, I like this guy. Now, he's not telling me that. You see, that's the power of it. They're not telling me that. But if you're disconnecting, so if I kept saying, hey, Arthur, let's, let's get this done. This is good, but I want to go to lunch with you. Now I'm kind of disconnecting with him. Now, he's not going to tell me. Hey, Jeff, I'm an Eagle business person. I don't do lunch. I'm disconnecting with you. But inside he's going, I'm kind of disconnecting with him. So that's why we believe on the studies, you can increase your sales alone up to 30% by mirror, ma mirror right. matching. Yeah, the studies have actually shown, they've actually done real studies on it. They, they, they've proven 25% effectiveness. But, you know, it depends on the quality of the training. Right. With our training, who knows? It could be up to 31%. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. So are you starting to get... Now, we want you to have um, you know, takeaways from just this session. We call them golden nuggets. We want you to take away golden nuggets. So we want you to start just thinking about, hey, this is my bird, but my job in sales is to mirror and match theirs because that's where the bonding and rapport is going to take place. And they're going to say inside their head, they're going, this person gets me uncomfortable with this person. It's so powerful. And I think you'll find yourself catching yourself just from the session going, hey, I wasn't flexing. I wasn't mirror matching. I was imposing my style. But why? I was untrained on it. And that's okay. Now you're getting your training on it. Now you can make a shift. You can make a shift just from the session. Yeah, so we have a lot of clients that once they learn the discommunication model, behavioral model, they'll put uh, an image of whatever, which bird they are, they're, what's called your core behavioral style. In other words, we all on occasion will use some of the traits and characteristics of each of the four birds. But most of us have a core style, a, a style that's most prevalent, that we, we use most frequently. And so whatever their core style is, they'll have a, you know, a picture of that bird on their, on their workstation when everybody was working out of an office so that when people would come to visit them or talk to them or just come over for a, a conversation, th they would understand to flex and modify to that particular bird and improve communication and make things more fun. But it also gave everybody within the office some practice on flexing and modifying to other birds uh, so that when they were talking to a client or a prospect or a customer, they were just more skilled at it. Uh, so we actually, a, a scientific way of figuring out which bird you are is we have online tools where people can go on and we charge 65 bucks per person. And you get this very elaborate 25 to 30 page report with all kinds of illustrations in it. So that if you're an eagle, there's one particular page you can go to that tells the whole story. If you're an owl, you can read the whole thing and get a wealth of information on it. And if you're somewhere in the middle of that, go have lunch and a couple of martinis and have a good time reading it, okay? So in any event, um, 
we can uh, we we have all kinds of training here. Our primary focus is on helping people to be more effective at selling, qualifying, closing, having more fun, and making more money. We also do a lot of sales management training. So with that, what I'd like to do is just have each of you write down a seven-day implementation. A seven-day implementation. What are you going to get started? What are you going to do based on what you got out of this? program this morning. What are you going to implement over the next seven days? So could you write that down? What I <clears throat> ask you to do is put it on a, um, a blank piece of paper and then put that piece of paper up someplace where you see it every day. So it reinforces your takeaway, your implementation, reminds you to do it. There's something called consistency theory, which I'll end by sharing it with you. Um, so you can, and you can look it up. I'm not making this up. It's called the New York Beach Blanket Experiments, where psychologists went to prove that if you write down what you're going to do or you say what you're going to do, the odds of you're actually doing it are much, much, much higher. And so they, ha they hired an actor as part of the experiment, and they'd have them go, they had them go down to the beach, lay out a blanket about 10 or 15 feet away from an unsuspecting party. He had a portable radio, put his radio down in the blanket, start playing the radio for a little while, and then he'd go take a dip. And while he was taking a dip, another actor who was part of the experiment would come down the beach, kind of look around, kind of make sure that the unsuspecting party would notice him and look kind of suspicious. And then he'd scoop the radio and just hightail it down the beach. They did this. 20 times in a row, 20 different unsuspecting parties. How many times do you think the unsuspecting parties said something to the thief or chased them or did anything out of 20? And this is in the beaches of New York, Long Island. Anybody want to take a chart? Okay, so Amy's saying zero. Well, it was actually four times that people said something. Yeah, impressive, right? Especially in New York. Okay, so they ran the experiment again 20 more times. Only this time, before he went and took a dip, he'd ask the unsuspecting party, hey, could you keep an eye on my radio while I go take a dip? The actor would once again come along, scoop the radio and hightail it down the beach. Now how many times out of 20 do you think the unsuspecting party said something or did something? Anybody want to take a shot? Okay, so Rand saying 10. You're saying 10, Amy? Okay. 17. 17 times. In fact, four times the unsuspecting parties actually chased the guy down the beach and tackled him. Okay. <laughs> so please write down your 14 day or your seven day implementations. Start using it. The sooner you start using it, the sooner you get the benefit. And also, the sooner you start using it, the more likely to use it at all. So I want to thank you guys for being uh, fantastic. We've enjoyed working with you. We'll be in touch with you next week. Have a wonderful weekend. And uh, once again, I appreciate uh, the Merrimack Valley Chamber of Commerce having us do this. It's always a pleasure. So take care and have a nice weekend. We'll see you soon, hopefully. Thank, thank you, Greg and Jeff, for hosting us. You got it. Our thank pleasure. you very much, all of you.